fish have an internal gas-filled organ called the swim bladder that helps them to maintain their position in the water column. Oftentimes when a fish is forcibly brought from the bottom to the surface, the swim bladder gases expand to the point that the fish cannot get back down when released on its own. This is what we would refer to as barotrauma. Signs of barotrauma include a swollen abdomen, the stomach protruding through the mouth, eyes protruding, and the intestines protruding through the anus. In extreme cases, you may also see the scales bubbling. In the next segments, we will be discussing different methods that anglers can use to help their fish survive and get back down to depth so that they can be caught again. Venting performed properly is a very appropriate way to get your reef fish that's suffering from barotrauma back down to the bottom. Sometimes with barotrauma, external symptoms aren't really, really obvious. Sometimes you don't see the huge pop eye or the intestinal protrusion. But if you look inside the mouth, you can see that swim bladder expands, which pushes the stomach basically inside out and out of the mouth. So venting basically works with any hollow stainless steel tool. In this case, we've got a hypodermic needle with a relatively large gauge. You want to lay the fish's pectoral fin flat against the body. The swim bladder is going to be right about at the edge of the pec fin, and you want to insert the needle into the swim bladder. You can kind of push on the body, let that gas out. I heard it escaping, and this fish is just fine to go. When you put them back into the water, you want to go head first. Barotrauma does get worse the longer they're at the surface, so you want to try to get them back into the water as quickly as possible. Fish have an internal ballasting organ called a swim bladder, and when they're brought forcefully to the surface through hook and line fishing, that pressure change triggers the swim bladder to expand, sometimes to the point that they cannot get back down. And this is what we would refer to as barotrauma. Descending devices are weighted tools that rapidly descend your fish back down to depth where swim bladder gases recompress naturally. There are three basic types of descending devices. There's the lip clamping device, there's a lip hooking device, and then there is a weighted elevator, which is essentially a milk crate with weights on the side. When there is heavy predation in the area, descending devices have the potential of rapidly getting your fish down quickly to their capture depth, where they can take refuge in the reef system. Discard mortality is used in making fisheries regulations by both stock assessments and fisheries managers to identify about how many fish are surviving the catch and release event. So we want to reduce our discard mortality to increase our fishing opportunities in the future. There's been a lot of research that has been done um, at both state and academic agencies that have demonstrated the effectiveness of both venting and um, weighted descent in increasing the survival of released fish. And there have been multiple studies that have demonstrated that the fish's swim bladder can heal after a venting event, um, and the fish is able to actually survive and be recaptured multiple times. There have been some species of grouper that we've caught over and over again that have gone through both the venting and descending process. And so by having these recaptures, we have some verified survival there are definitely times when you're fishing that it's not always feasible to bring the fish on board and vent it or descend it or hook up descending gear. The first fish that comes to mind is going to be the Goliath grouper. The best thing the angler can do is get that fish's head pointed down and try to get its tail underwater. Once that tail gets underwater, they can kick and they can get down on their own. But if the fish is suffering from severe barotrauma and just can't get that tail under the water and get himself push downward. There are strategies that the angler can use to vent them. That would be a safety first situation for the fishermen, but there are large venting tools that you can use to vent a Goliath grouper. Same exact spot that would use on any other grouper. It just gives you a little bit more depth to get through that giant fillet and actually puncture the swim bladder and allow some of that gas to escape. 